Do you have that one friend filled with that random and seemingly unending amount of useless knowledge? Well, I am that friend, and if I don't know the answer to something, I'll certainly be looking it up. I love to learn, research, and share my findings, so I thought, why not share it all with a bunch of strangers on the internet? And, you know, maybe enjoy a drink or two while we're at it. Welcome to I'm Already Looking It Up. Hey, hey, and welcome to I'm Already Looking It Up, the podcast where I, your host, do a little bit of research on a subject that I simply find interesting or I'm curious about, and tell you all, my lovely listeners, what I find. My name is Carly, and without further further ado, let's get into it. So, everyone, I think, knows that... This last week was Valentine's Day, at least at the time that this episode is coming out. Um, And I decided to talk a little bit about Valentine's Day um, and the origins of it. And then maybe uh, if we have time, we'll get into some interesting Valentine's Day traditions that most people don't know about. Um, So yeah, uh, I always learned as a kid that... Valentine's Day was based around St. Valentine, and um, it was a day where he, well, I don't know what the specific day was, if it's like his birthday or anything, and I'm sure we'll learn it here in a moment, but um, it was a day where uh, people, he was in prison, and everyone, everyone loved him because he performed marriages on uh for couples where it was illegal for those couples to get married for one reason or another kind of the epitome of love is love which is really really kind of cool and interesting uh and i was told that the reason we give little gifts or cards or and you know what have you on valentine's day is because um people gave him many in his cell when he was um incarcerated so Uh, That is what I always had been told as a kid, so I I guess we'll learn and see what the true, true meaning of Valentine's Day is. (laughs) Um, So the article I I decided to go ahead and take a look at is uh, from History.com, and I know I've talked about History.com before and how I feel like it's not the best uh, source sometimes. Um, even though you would think you could trust something like history.com, but, uh, you know, I think it's getting better. Honestly, I've been looking at some of their stuff and I think there's, there's been some better, uh, kind of, um, fact checking and everything. So, um, and, and they updated their band, they've been updating stuff, which is kind of cool. So. Uh, it's just called History of Valentine's Day, and so yeah, let's, uh, let's get started. Valentine's Day occurs every February 14th. Across the United States and in other places around the world, candy, flowers, and gifts are exchanged between loved ones, all in the name of Saint Valentine. But who is this mysterious saint, and where did these traditions come from? Find out about the meaning and history of Valentine's Day from the ancient Roman ritual of Lupercalia that welcomed spring that welcomed spring to the card-giving customers of Victorian England. All right, here we go. It's always started out with capitalism. No, I'm kidding. All right, the legend of Saint Valentine. Where did Valentine's Day originate from? The history of the holiday and the story of its patron saint is shrouded in mystery. We do know that February has long been celebrated as a month of romance, and that St. Valentine's Day, as we know it today, contains, contains vestiges of both Christian and ancient Roman tradition. But who was St. Valentine, and how did he become associated with this ancient rite? The Catholic Church itself um, recognizes three 
at least three different saints named Valentine or Valentine Valentinus Valentinus, um, all of whom were martyred. One legend contends that Valentine was a priest who served during the third century in Rome when Emperor Claudius II decided that single men made better soldiers than those with wives and families, he outlawed marriage for young men. So yeah, this is where I'm, I was getting the, uh, that information from. All right. Uh, Valentine, realizing the injustice of the decree, defied Claudius and continued to perform marriages for young lovers in secret. When Valentine's actions were discovered, Claudius ordered that he be put to death. Still, others insist that it was St. Valentine of Terni, a bishop who was the true namesake of the holiday. He, too, was beheaded by Claudius II outside of Rome. Other stories suggest that Valentine may have been killed for attempting to help Christians escape harsh Roman prisons, where they were often beaten and tortured. According to one legend, an imprisoned Valentine actually sent the first Valentine greeting himself after he fell, he fell in love with a young girl, possibly his jailer's daughter. Oh, and that, uh, again, sometimes these articles, like when you cold read them, it's just, uh, um, possibly his jailer's daughter who visited him during his confinement. Before his death, it is alleged that he wrote her a letter signed from your Valentine, an expression that is still used today. Although the truth behind the Valentine's legends is murky, the stories all emphasize his appeal as sympathetic, heroic, and most importantly, rom a romantic figure. By the Middle Ages, um, perhaps thanks to this reputation, Valentine would become one of the most popular saints in England and France. There you go. So it was a, it was a saint. A um, little murky on the details, but I mean, history... That's it, especially with a lot of, like, um, sort of mythological figures like that. Um, Santa Claus, if you really dive deep into the um, history of who Santa is meant to be or what Santa is and where he comes from, um, you're going to find a lot of very murky stories, especially how much they vary from nation to nation. So, it's pretty... Excuse me. It is pretty interesting. Uh, origins of Valentine's Day, a pagan festival in February. Oh, should not have done that. Um, while some believe that Valentine's Day is celebrated in the middle of February to commemorate the anniversary of Valentine's death or burial, which probably occurred around A.D. 270, Others claim that the Christian church may have decided to place St. Valentine's Feast Day in the middle of February in an effort to Christianize the pagan celebration of Lupercalia. Celebrated at the ideas of February, or February, oh, or February 15th, Lupercalia was a fertility festival dedicated to Faunus and Roman god of ar agriculture as well as to the Roman founders, Romulus and Remus. So yeah, that makes sense. Like, I, I think I've mentioned before, it, it happens a lot where um, a lot of uh, <laughs> holidays as we know them today, um, especially ones that are, like, sort of Christianized. Um, I wouldn't say Valentine's Day is like that anymore, but um, things like Easter and um, Christmas and all that have, you know, the most, it's most likely that most of them were taken from a pagan tradition and, um, you know, Christianized in a way to make it so that the people didn't really have to change anything they were doing. Um, but like if they were asked, it was a, you know, Christian reason. So, uh, that way they could kind of just get away with it, uh, which is very smart, but I think that's uh, interesting. Uh, so yeah, the Valentine's Day itself, I think is in, that's interesting that that would be associated with something like that, because it's not what I expected, because it's not anymore, it's not really a, I wouldn't consider it a Christian holiday. 
Lupercalia survived the initial rise of Christianity, but was outlawed, as it was deemed unchristian. At the end of the 5th century, when Pope jo- Jaleasus declared February 14th St. Valentine's Day. It was not until much later, however, that the day became definitely, definitively associated with love. During the Middle Ages, it was commonly believed in France and England that February 14th was the beginning of birds mating season, which added to the idea that the middle of Valentine's Day should be for romance. Uh, the English poet Geoffrey Chaucer was, Geoffrey Chaucer was, one, was the first to record St. Valentine's Day as a romantic celebration in his 1375 poem, Parliament of Fowls, writing, For this was sent to, ah, this was sent on St., but it's spelled weird, St. Valentine's Day, when every fowl cometh there to choose his mate. So, interesting. Uh, Valentine greetings were popular as far back as the Middle Ages, though written valentines didn't begin to appear until after 1400. The oldest known valentine still in existence today was a poem written in 1415 by Charles, Duke of Orleans, to his wife while he was imprisoned in the Tower of London following his capture at the Battle of Agincourt. Yeah. The greeting is now part of the manuscript collection of the British Library in London. Several years later, it is believed that King Henry V, Henry V hired a writer named John Lydgate to compose a Valentine note to Catherine of Valois. Valo- Valois. Sure. <laughs> so yeah, uh, throughout history, there have been... I mean, love letters, I feel like, have always been kind of a big thing, and now it's not even love letters anymore. I mean, people still give cards and everything, but you don't pass little cute notes back and forth in school or anything. It's all texting and technology, and I mean, you're less likely to get caught and get things taken away if that happens. I've definitely have a note, I've definitely had a note or two read out loud, um... In, in class, it's not fun. It's not a good time. So, this next section talks a bit about Cupid, which I know is the um, kind of poster boy for Valentine's Day. It's very inter- interesting uh, origins. Um, so, Cupid is often portrayed on Valentine's Day cards as a naked cherub launching arrows of love, of love at unsuspecting lovers. And I didn't mean to hit that. I accidentally scrolled. All right. Uh, Unsuspecting lovers. But the Roman god Cupid has his roots in Greek mythology as the Greek god of love, Eros. Accounts of his birth vary. Some say he is the son of Nyx and Urbus, others of Aphrodite and Ares. Still, others suggest he is the son of Iris and Zephyrus, or even Aphrodite and Zeus, who would have been his father and his grandfather. And I tend to go with the Aphrodite and Ares story. Um, I don't know why. I think it's kind of just like the idea that so Aphrodite is is beauty, um, whereas Ares is war. And I think it's I like the idea of those two making something because love is love is not easy. Love is very difficult. Um, especially in the romantic sense, and it can be war in a way. It can definitely feel like war. So taking something that could be super beautiful, or that is super beautiful when it's, you know, not battling itself, and saying that it could be paired with something that is all about battle and all that, I think that's beautiful. I love it. Anyway, According to the Greek archaic poets, Eros was a handsome immortal, played, played with, who played, yeah, who played with the emotions of gods and men using golden arrows to incite love and 
laden ones to sow aversion. See, and it's even, it is even love and war with him. I love it. Um, it wasn't until the Hellenistic period that he began to be portrayed as a mischievous, chubby child he'd become on Valentine's Day cards. All right. All right, so typical Valentine's Day greetings and gifts. In addition to the United States, Valentine's Day is celebrated in Canada, Mexico, the United Kingdom, France, and Australia. In Great Britain, Valentine's Day began to be popularly, ce popularly celebrated around the 17th century. By the middle of the 18th, I'm, I'm assuming they mean 18th century, it was common for friends and lovers of all social classes to exchange small tokens of affection or handwritten notes, and by 1900, printed cards began to replace written letters due to improvements in printing technology. Ready-made cards were an easy way for people to express their emotions in a time when direct expression of one's feelings was discouraged. Cheaper postage rates also contribute, contributed to an increase in the popularity of sending Valentine's Day greetings. There you go. Um, Americans probably began exchanging handmade Valentines. Yeah, handmade Valentines in the early 1700s. In the 1840s, Esther... Esther A. Howland began selling the first mass-produced valentines in America. Howland, known as the mother of the valentine, made elaborate creations with real lace, ribbons, and colorful pictures known as scrap. Today, according to Hallmark, an estimated 145 million Valentine's Day cards are sent each year, making Valentine's Day the second largest card-sending holiday of the year. More cards are sent at Christmas, because of course they are. Hops! Get out of there. Cat is getting into a bag that's on my bed. Alright. Alright, alright. So, that is the history.com Hey! Stop that. Article. Um, and then I thought if we have time, which I believe we do, um, it would be fun to talk about how Valentine's Day is celebrated around the world because I know we got our traditions here, um, but I always find it interesting to know what other people do because, I mean, why not? Now, personally, I have a person, my husband and I have a personal Valentine's Day tradition and it's basically because um, when we started living together, we were poor uh, college students who could hardly afford anything. Uh, so we didn't expect gifts from each other, though it was nice if it happened. Usually like some candy or a little stuffed animal. Sometimes we would get really nice things for each other. Um, but I, our tradition was usually to find something we wanted to watch uh, a movie that neither of us had seen, or a show that we'd been wanting to watch together, or just, like, binging something that's, like, one of our beloved shows, um, order pizza and have some drinks and just chill out on the couch. Uh, maybe not the whole day, sometimes the whole day, but, um, you know, usually, like, most of the evening that was always our go-to. And honestly, I always think that's so much fun. Just chilling, hanging out, watching something you want to watch together, and uh, having a good time. One year we bought, uh, we were going, I don't remember what we were going to buy. We were going to get a DVD, and we had planned, or no, we didn't go to the store for a DVD. I don't remember what we went to the store for. But we were looking at the DVDs, and they had the entire Avatar collection on DVD. Avatar The Last Airbender. So we ended up buying that, and that was going to be our movie. that Or our little date thing that we watched. So it was kind of fun. Um, before we went to college uh, and moved out of our parents' house, 
he, well, okay, he was living with his grandparents still this Valentine's Day. Was this a Christmas gift or a Valentine's Day gift? Might have been kind of both. Um, I think it was, it might have just been a Christmas gift. Ah, well, I'm going to tell it anyway because I love it. Um, so, one thing about me is that I, in high school, kind of beginning of college and middle school, I was very much a choral kid. I would, I would always be in choir and I, um, my first couple years in college, I took voice lessons and, um, you know, performed here and there because I had a scholarship for it. So why not? And, uh, in one of my recitals or in my big, like kind of senior recital, even though I wasn't a music major, so I didn't technically have to have a senior recital. I just wanted to do a senior recital and my professor was totally on board with it. Um, but in my senior recital, I planned to sing Music of the Night because it's my favorite song from Phantom of the Opera and it's lovely and I'd been working on it really hard. And um, my then boyfriend, now husband, bought me a little Phantom of the Opera music box that when you opened it, it has the Phantom and Christine spinning in a circle and it, sh and it plays Music of the Night. And I just thought that was the sweetest gift that like anyone well maybe not anyone but that you know it was just really really thoughtful and really well you know he really he really thought that one through and I was giving props for it because it was pretty good did a pretty good job so um but yeah that was always our tradition is just like hanging out pizza didn't need to be you know buy each other gifts because there was no real reason we felt that it was necessary um Again, if it happened, it happened. If it didn't, oh well. As long as we got to spend a little time together around that time. And even then, we're... I mean, I personally, I like Valentine's Day. I just don't really celebrate it that much. Just because I don't need a, a day. But it is nice to kind of make plans and have a little, you know, hang out, have fun with someone you love. So, anyway rant over. Don't know why I went on so long. So, um, this article is called Interesting Valentine's Day Traditions Around the World. Um, I got it from a website called Tiara Inc. No clue what they're about, but it seemed to have some pretty interesting things to talk about. So, uh, each year, February 14th brings Valentine's Day a day of celebrating friendships, partners, and love in all forms. In the United States, the holiday is mainly celebrated by going to restaurants, exchanging presents, and buying flowers and candy. Each Valentine's Day, Americans spend around $21 billion, signifying how important it is to show loved ones how much they mean to you. But what about Valentine's Day traditions in other parts of the world? Is the focus primarily on romantic relationships? While many countries have similar traditions to the United States, many also have their own unique celebration. In this article, we'll look at the traditions and celebrations of Valentine's Day around the world. All right, so... Mm, yeah. What do we got? We got South Korea to start. Um, similar... Oh, wait. Did I skip something? Because it says similar to Japan. Uh, oh, I think I'm my link thing left up. Um, I think the one for Japan just basically talks a little more about... Mm. So, wait. Yeah. so they have... A Valentine's Day and women are typically um, more encouraged to be the ones giving the gifts, I think, because um, I did read this one a little bit ahead of time. And men will return the favor the next month um, on White Day. So uh, I'm pretty sure that's... Yeah. Yep. Okay, 
So, <laughs> uh, South Korea, similar to Japan, uh, Valentine's Day in South Korea is also a day for women to give gifts to men, but it is also a day for couples to celebrate their love for each other. Many couples exchange gifts and go on romantic dates. On the 14th of April, also known as Black Day, single people gather together to eat... Oh, I'm gonna say this wrong... Yang Yang Myon? Myon? Black, black pasta noodles, which sounds really good, and commiserate about their single status. So it's anti Valentine's Day. Let's go. That's kind of great. I love that. The whole, the country just has like a day for that. Um, oh yeah, this article did not save well. Okay, let me see if I can just find it again Hopefully this doesn't like freeze up my computer like last time. Okay. So the one in Japan was in Japan Valentine's Day is primarily a day for women to give chocolates to the men in their lives. The practice known as Giri Chaco. Giri Chaco? I don't know. Is often directed towards male coworkers or friends rather than romantic partners. A month later on White Day, each March 14th, men Men return the favor by giving gifts, typically white chocolate, to the women who gave them chocolates on Valentine's Day. Okay, so that makes sense. Um, let's see, we did South Korea. So, Italy. In Italy, Valentine's Day, known as La Festa de Gli Innamorati, is a romantic holiday and is celebrated similarly Similarly to how it is in the United States, couples exchange gifts and go on romantic dates. But in Italy, there is also a tradition of giving baki or baci, baci perugina, type of chocolate, specific type of chocolate, which come with romantic phrases printed on the wrapper. So like sweethearts, but chocolate and not disgusting. And I will stand on that hill. They're so gross. And I like sweet tarts, like, themselves. When it's the sweet tart ones, it's fine. But when it's, like, the actual sweet hearts, ugh, they're so gross. Anyway, in France, uh, in France, Valentine's Day is known as La Sainte Valentine and is also a romantic holiday. French couples often exchange gifts and go on romantic dates, but one unique tradition is the giving of cartes... Da, da, my, um, da mite, or friendship cards, which are similar to Valentine's Day cards, but are given to friends and family members as well as romantic partners. So it's, it's a love day for everyone, which I think, I think in um, America that is becoming more of a thing where it's just like, just celebrate your loved ones, you know? So my parents used to get us like uh, pajamas on Valentine's Day. That was always our tradition as well. Um, Finland, Valentine's Day is called, I'm not, I won't, I won't try to say that, because I can't, um, which, but the word it is called translates to Friends Day, so whatever that is, it is a day for celebrating all forms of love, not just romantic love, friends, family members, and loved ones exchange gifts and cards to show appreciation for one another, another. so there you go. Um, in Brazil, Valentine's Day is known as Dia dos Namorados, or Lover's Day, and couples exchange gifts and go on romantic dates. However, in Brazil, St. Anthony is also known as the Saint of Love and is celebrated on June 13th. It is traditional for couples to exchange gifts and go to church on this day. How cute. India. 
Valentine's Day has grown increasingly popular in India throughout the years, especially with the younger generations. Many people exchange gifts and go on romantic dates like in other countries, but the holiday has also faced severe backlash from certain religious groups who hold traditional values. However, many Indians continue to celebrate the holiday and express their love for one another. That's sweet. I mean, it's very interesting because I, re I remember when I kind of read through this a little earlier that I, I was like, yeah, I guess that would make sense because traditionally in India, arranged marriages are the main thing. So you don't really get a chance to date or any of that for the most part. So, um, I mean, I imagine some people do. I imagine there are some families who live there that don't follow those traditions anymore. Um, but yeah, it's definitely more common there. Um, overall, while Valentine's Day is primarily a holiday of romance and love, different countries have their own unique traditions. Excuse me. Some countries focus on romantic love, while others include the celebration of friendship and family. No matter when, where, or how you celebrate Valentine's Day, we wish you and your loved ones a happy time full of love and friendship. So there you have it. Um... I think uh, that is a wonderful little little tidbit. I'm sure there are other traditions. I love looking at traditions of other countries. I think it's fascinating. Um, but like I said, uh, you know, we have our little pizza and movie and TV tradition. And we also have, um, my parents used to, you know, give us pajamas. Uh, my husband's mom sometimes sends us a gift card. So we'll sometimes use that for our food if that happens so it's yeah it's a nice nice little thing to just show that you appreciate your loved ones in your life you don't have to be in a romantic relationship to celebrate valentine's day you should celebrate the people you love and you know show your appreciation because you never know who who knows what in their head um and i think that's where we'll leave it for today uh, thank you f so much for taking the time to listen to me talk. If you're enjoying the show, please like, share, and subscribe. All my social links are down below. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>